Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Joseph Garvin. I'm here to talk to you about uselessness and game control schemes. So, normally when people talk about game control schemes, you can sort of divide them up into, uh, oh, it's a bit echoey, uh, into arcade and simulation. Uh, arcade control schemes are, they're quick, they're easy, they're simple, and basically what they're doing, okay, uh, is they are, uh, they're shortcuts to power. They take a really complicated procedure and they make it really simple. So, you know, you've got your, uh, your Assassin's Creed. You don't need to be in any kind of expert in fencing or parkour to be able to run up a building, stab one guy in the head, and then fence a dozen guards in Assassin's Creed. It's very easy. And you've got your stuff like Cannibalt. You don't... Oh, good. <laughs> Can we not use the mic? Okay, yeah, no mic. It's really annoying. Um... Uh, and you've got stuff like Cannibalt, where you don't even have to press a button to be running forward at full speed. The whole, for people who haven't played Cannibalt, it's a game where you're running away from giant robots from one collapsing skyscraper to another. All you do is press the spacebar to jump over obstacles. It's the entirety of your control. So you're not doing anything to run, you're just going over, over obstacles. So these are arcade schemes. They're very simple, they, go sh they shortcut over all the difficulties. On the other side, you've got simulation control schemes, uh, where you've got stuff like all the flight simulators, so you've got Microsoft Flight Simulator, Aerofly FS, Flight Unlimited, Digital Combat Simulator, which simulates every individual button and toggle on the inside of, air, of fighter aircraft cockpits. If you want to watch someone be utterly confused, look up NerdCube DCS on YouTube. It is someone spending 20 minutes trying to figure out how to make an aircraft start. <laughs> it's really boring but hilarious, because it's just like watching a Monty Python sketch. It's just someone going... It's someone who doesn't understand what they're doing walking into a wall. Um, but these are both... They're useful schemes in some way. On the arcades, sorry, you know, they're, they're satisfying our desire for power fantasies. So that's useful. I mean, sort of. It makes us feel good. And, you know, what's more useful than that? On the other side, you've got simulators, which are, they're teaching you something. I mean, a lot of flight simulators come literally out of educational programs developed by uh, military programs. They want, they want to be able to teach fighter pilots how to fly planes without risking, you know, $20 million pieces of hardware every time you teach someone. So they build simulators. And then now you can buy them your computer. And now you can, you know, do all sorts of things with, you know, flying F-18s on the surface of Mars. Which is a thing you can do in Aerofly, apparently. Um, and so these are your useful schemes. So I'm going to, just because this isn't that long a talk, I'm going to go into a little more detail. With Cannibalt, you've got, um, as I said, you know, you've got your endless runner. All you do is you press one button to jump. Jumping is not a single action. Jumping involves tensing however many muscles. Are there any medics in the house? Anyone who knows anatomy? Good. No one does. <laughs> so no one can contradict me if I say anything. Uh, but it involves many, many muscles. It involves a lot of balance. You know, a bunch of. Many okay. people can't do it. I probably can't do it. Um, and in terms, of, like, so that's that's the arcade game. And in terms of seeing later games, there's one which I find really interesting, which is called Receiver. Um, in Receiver, you start off in this sort of industrial space, or sometimes a really terrible hotel, um, and you have a gun, and you can fire your gun, and then your gun is empty, and now you reload it. Most games reload single button. On a PC, you press R. On an Xbox, you press B or something. In Receiver, you have to press one button to take the magazine out of the gun, another button to put it away, another button to bring one out, another button to put it back, to put that magazine into the gun, and another button to chamber it. And sometimes another button again to take the safety off. This is a huge amount of detail about how to use a weapon over and above what you'd find in Call of Duty, where it's just hit one button, whole thing. So I'm not gonna say I can now use a gun because I've played receiver, but certainly I have a much deeper understanding of well, how, what are the steps involved in reloading a Beretta, or a revolver, or whatever. There's a lot more detail in Receiver. So these have educational roles. 
And it is kind of an assumption that anything that falls outside of either power fantasy or educational is a bad control. And I'm going to say that's not true, because I think there's another kind of control which is a good control, but doesn't have any of those. And those are the useless controls. They're not power fantasy controls. They don't make you feel strong and adequate. Um, but they're also really not going to teach you anything at all. So there's two examples I'm going to talk about. Uh, one is a game called Quop. Q-W-O-P. Has anyone here played Quop? Okay, we've got a few hands up. So for the rest of you, Quop is a game where you control a man named Quop, who is the 100 meter hurdles racer for a country called Quop at the Olympics. But he's had no training. As far as you can tell, he's had no training in how to walk. You have to control his thighs <laughs> and calves independently. One button for each thigh, one button for each calf. So instead of walking normally, he sort of does this. As like, it's a hurdles game. How many of the people who played co-op knew there are hurdles further down the route? Okay, one. That's the thing. There are about four people that had to, only one of them knew it was a hurdle game. I've never seen a hurdle in co because I've only gone seven meters before I fell over. This is normal in co -op. No one gets much more, other than by doing that. And the other one I want to talk about is a Surgeon Simulator, or Surgeon Simulator 2013. So Surgeon Simulator is a game where you play Nigel. He's a surgeon. Um, Nigel has apparently been punched repeatedly in the side of his arm here and in his head because he can't pick things up anymore. But somehow he's the best surgeon in his hospital. <laughs> surgeon Simulator, you should not learn anything about medical practice from Surgeon Simulator. And you will not be a good surgeon. You will, you will pull back the cloth to find a magic exposure page, smash it open with a saw because you can't actually saw Part of his ribs will get stuck in his intestines, you'll pull his heart out, and you'll find the other one in the fridge, and you'll drop it, and then the game is over. <laughs> and you'll do it again, and again, because it's hilarious. Surgeon Simulator is grotesque, and sort of obscene, but wonderful. So, I mean, what are these controls doing? And they're not the only ones. There's also a game called Probably Archery. There's Octodad, where you play an octopus, in a suit, who has a wife who doesn't know he's an octopus, even though they have children. <laughs> and the whole point is you are an octopus, and you have to control his four individual tentacle limbs and pick things up and avoid being identified as an octopus because there is a sushi chef chasing you. <laughs> he doesn't know which person is an octopus, but he knows someone is, and he's going to eat that octopus. <laughs> or your wife will leave you. It's a very strange game. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other games in this broad genre. And the thing is, it's a genre based on control rather than like science fiction or, uh, or even like perspective games. So you have third person games like a uh, like talking out of your first person. <laughs> and try to represent them with something that's about as complex. They're obviously not identical, because, you know, it's a keyboard. Although some people do flight simulators that are just as complex as flight games because they build cockpits in their living room. And presumably their partners and children just kind of go, oh God, what are they up to now? And they bring a new piece of technology in. Um, but, okay, one minute left. A useless game is a game that makes you use two hands to do one hand's work. So in Surgeon Simulator, Nigel only ever uses his right hand. He'll pick up a scalpel. You have to use your right hand to move his hand around, and then your left hand to control his fingers. So this picking something up, it's not that difficult an action. Look, even I can do it. I'm not that competent. <laughs> um, but it's something that it just 
it becomes incredibly difficult to do in co-op. It becomes very, running it in co-op, it becomes very difficult to do in search and simulator to pick anything up. So they're doing something very different from arcade or simulator, but they're not bad games. They're really good games. <laughs> Just, they're not games which do the things we think games should do when game reviewers go, oh, this game had good controls or bad controls. They're working on assumptions that don't actually apply to uh, useless games. Right, there we go. That'll do. Thank you. So, questions? because it's the only one I'm any good at. Like, I cannot complete a single surgery in Surgeon Simulator. I can't fire an arrow in, in probably archery. Uh, and I've only actually tried like the original demo of Octodad, not the polished one, which is called Octodad Dadliest Catch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, 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 this is one of the interesting things, like, almost all these games, these useless games, or, or anti-simulation games, or sometimes all, uh, are, are comedy games which is interesting, but um, yeah, I guess co-op, and also it's free. <laughs> it's nice, free games are good. Do you think there is this, there's this video game, I totally forgot, when you real-time drive between two African cities? The Desert Bus? Desert Bus. Yes. yes. Yeah. Desert Bus is probably the originator of this. I This is actually in, yeah. in the, so this is the second time I've given a talk on this topic, and my original talk ended with uh, a, like a very short history of it, and I feel like, well, Desert Bus is probably the originator. But then it doesn't, like, people go, oh, Desert Bus is funny, but I don't know of anyone who picked that up until Bennett Foddy, the man who is too good at everything, did, made Quop. And Bennett Foddy is the basis and cut copy, a professor of bioethics at Oxford, and a, and a celebrated game designer, all at only, like, 33 years old. I hate Bennett Foddy. <laughs> uh, and third question? Oh, um, uh, I played co-op, basically. <laughs>